Hey guys, welcome back to 4 Wheel Driver's Life. The Mercedes G-Class and the Jeep Wrangler JK are both known for their off-road capabilities, but they have different approaches to achieve this goal. The G-Class has a more luxurious and refined feel with advanced technology and high-end features. However, its off-road capabilities are still impressive with all-wheel drive, locking differentials, and a high ground clearance. On the other hand, the Jeep Wrangler JK is purpose-built for off-road, with features like solid axles, high ground clearance, and large tires. Its rugged and simplistic design makes it perfect for tackling rough terrain and challenging obstacles. Ultimately, both vehicles are excellent choices for off-road enthusiasts, and today we have the opportunity to show you how each vehicle performs in the same environment. We went to the local AOAA off-road park with two vehicles and compared it against each other uh, to see which one's a better off-roader, either the Mercedes G-Wagon or the Jeep Wrangler JK. They're both uh, lifted about 2 to 3 inches and the Jeep uh, Wrangler JK is on 34 inch tires where the G-Wagon is on 33 inch tires. Due to the Jeep Wrangler JK is a Sahara model and doesn't have any lockers, we didn't turn on any front or rear lockers on the G-Wagon, just to make it a more fair comparison. As you've seen just now, the water was pretty deep up against the hood of the Jeep, where it's about probably 30 to 35 inch deep. And so is this case, in the, as the G-Wagon crosses the water, you can see that it's almost at the headlight and the 33 inch tire is almost submerged into the water. Here I want to emphasize the way you attack the water is very important as well. Um, as I always learned myself that when you're going to the water, always take your time. At least try to stay behind the bow that the vehicle created instead of crushing the bow so that the water would be much higher than what it actually is and it will have a, more of a chance to go into your intake. Okay, now on the rocks. Both vehicles excel at rock crawling, but Jeep Wrangler JK is designed specifically for this purpose. It has a shorter wheelbase, a higher ground clearance, even with the lift the G-Wagon has, the, the Jeep Wrangler JK still has a little more ground clearance than the Jeep uh, G-Wagon. Also, they both have solid axles, which, are con which all contributes to its superior rock crawling capability. The G-Class, while capable of handling rough terrain, is better suited for higher speed off-roading and longer distance travel. So in this case, the Jeep Wrangler definitely excels at the rock crawling. You can see that easily flexed front and rear suspension and axle, and the driver took a more uh, aggressive line, and um, it's definitely easier on the rocks. Okay, here's another example comparing both vehicles through this obstacle. Uh, this is like a really rocky little narrow trail in the woods where it turns and curves a lot so that the size of the vehicle also matters in this case. And uh, G-Wagon being not too big, it's still a little bigger than the uh, Jeep Wrangler so it's uh, less maneuverable compared to the Jeep Wrangler. However, um, due to the size of the tires, um, 33 is, is a good size for the G-Wagon and um, that's solid axles. It still have no problems uh, traversing this trail and you will see how Wrangler does it uh, in, a, in a little bit. Continue, 
Here comes the Jeep Wrangler JK. It's about two and a half inch lifted on 34 inch tires. Uh, basically, it's like a little mountain goat here. Um, definitely felt competent and um, the driver didn't have to worry as much as the G-Wagon driver due to the smaller size so that it's easily maneuverable. Here we're testing the suspension flex limit and the traction control capability of both vehicles under uh, cross axle scenarios. As you can see here, the dirt bank to the left front of the vehicle is about 35 inch tall. It's a little taller than the 33, 34 inch tires of the vehicles. And our plan is to tackle it diagonally to have the maximum tra uh, articulation of the suspension uh, reached. None of the rear or the front lockers were activated because they were um, unusable at the moment, uh, possibly due to the water crossing earlier that has some electrical damage in the rear axle. As you're seeing here, there doesn't seem to be any traction control system that, uh, that was effectively uh, applying the brake, so the vehicle wasn't able to be moved forward or up. Um, so it was a failed attempt by the G-Wagon. Now is the Jeep Wrangler JK's turn. It also doesn't have any front or rear locker. However, it had its front axle, uh, front sway bar unlocked. So it has more articulation over the G-Wagon. And uh, it's effectively using its traction control system and easily crowded up. Here is a really, really steep and rocky downhill um, challenge. Um, this definitely tests the driver's you know, confidence in their vehicle because it's, you're literally dropping into a, a, a very steep hill where, where it's rocky. So it's, it's not easy to break because the loose rocks. And the G-Wagon, both the G-Wagon and the Wrangler did it uh, with not a lot of hiccups, but it was a slower process. Um, engine brake was a huge factor here. Um, as you see here, the G-Wagon was definitely pacing it well. Uh, the lower gear uh, of the G-Wagon should be 2.93 for the transfer case ratio. And that's really helpful in terms of engine braking and lower gear uh, descent because it's uh, actually saving a lot of work from your brakes. So you don't, you know, really actually need to use your brakes too much. Um, as you can see here, the G-Wagon did it no problem. I uh, just need to take it its time. Uh, due to the uh, size of the rocks, it's uh, trying to avoid any damage underneath the vehicles. Here's a Jeep Wrangler JK coming down on the same trail. The stock transfer case ratio on this JK Sahara is 2.72 uh, ratio, uh, which is a little higher than the G Wagon's 2.93. So naturally it will have a little disadvantage in terms of engine braking uh, on this kind of uh, decline. However, due to the higher ground clearance and the JK's front uh, sway bar being disconnected, it was able to traverse this uh, downhill uh, with a little more speed than the G-Wagon does. Can you spot the Tundra in the background? If you want to see how Tundra does in this exact same terrains, please check my last video. I'll, I'll put a link of the video at the end of this video. Here's a footage of the only attempt we had tried at a blue trail. It was a very difficult blue trail and a significant inclining with a cliff to that right side and significant size rocks uh, and loose dirt. Um, we didn't 
we weren't able to try it uh, except that Jeep because it was the only capable one or the most capable one on the rocks. So you can see here it was just starting to spin tires and like every step I I walk forward it's like like two or three feet up. Uh, the camera never does its justice but it was a very steep hill with a cliff on the right side so it's a very um, dangerous situation in case of anything goes wrong. So the Jeep driver wanted to give it a shot um, and it's this it's at this spot where he wasn't able to uh, progress any forward he realized that you know it may be time to call it because we didn't want any you know unnecessary carnage um, it was just really out of our uh, range or out of our level um, of the either the vehicle or the, the driving skill um, there was just huge rocks being kicked up and not able to move anywhere. See how that rock being kicked out um, by the rear passenger tires and it just kept rolling? That tells you how steep this hill is. So eventually we decided to back down that hill which is another uh, adventure because it requires a lot of skill and spotting uh, due to it was a lot of curve, a lot of turning and downhill and with a clip on the right, uh, with a cliff on the right side. So it's definitely uh, very, um, you know, like a, a nervous or uh, nerve wracking experience. Uh, as you trying to, as you see here, I'm trying to tell the driver where to go, and the driver at this moment needs to have complete trust in the spotter. Um, no matter what, because the driver can't really see any better uh, in the vehicle. Also, as you see here, the rocks on the left side really make the vehicle would want to tilt or roll onto the cliff side, which is also bad. So I'm trying to tell the driver uh, how to maneuver the steering wheels to kind of try to avoid it as as best as he can. Um, and at this at this moment the effective and accurate communication is also the key and also letting him know that there is a rock on the right rear tire so that it will kind of both be lifting up at the same time etc so spotting is also very critical yeah there he goes uh, rear tires clear the rock now we need to pull a little forward to the right so that the vehicle can safely be turned backwards to the driver's side um it, it it's it's a lot of um you know geometry in my head uh, right now at this moment i'm spotting i'm filming at the same time and i'm communicating to the driver make sure he knows where i want him to go at this point the vehicle has been safely backed down to a uh, relatively easier safer spot um, so the driver can uh, maneuver the vehicle itself himself uh, down the last bit of the climb um, lesson learned is um, when we walked the trail we thought it was easier uh, we thought you know it's not too bad but then when the vehicle is actually uh, you know physically on the trail attempting it it definitely um, felt um, much worse than it actually looked even when you walk the trail it's still um, there's still maybe sometimes um, factors that you didn't see or, or realize that make the trail actually being harder than it looks um, so yeah so that's it for the comparison video uh, thank you guys for watching if you like the content please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and let me know uh, what vehicles you want to uh, watch next, you want to see next, and what's your favorite off-road vehicle. Uh, is it the G-Wagon or is it the Jeep Wrangler? Uh, comment below. Thank you so much. Have a good one.